in serving as a volunteer. There are always lots of uh, fun and engaging ways to be a part of this very meaningful community ministry in partnership with Heartland Community Church and with Sacred Heart Catholic Church. A reminder that uh, we do have our ongoing fundraising effort for relief efforts in Ukraine. So there is a second insert that talks a little bit about um, the organization that we're partnering with, that's Lutheran World Relief. And thanks to some initial gifts by some very generous congregations in Wisconsin, there is a dollar for dollar match right now for donations uh, to go toward relief efforts. You can give directly to Lutheran World Relief by uh, following the information there at the bottom of that insert. We are also receiving donations here at the church as a part of this project. And if you would like to write a check and donate here, I would recommend writing it to the church and then in the memo line, write like a Ukraine crisis or a Ukraine relief. And then we can, we can process it all together and send one gift then directly to Lutheran World Relief. That will be going through Easter Sunday, so we'll be receiving those donations here through Easter Sunday. To help uh, support our fundraising efforts, next Sunday, April 3rd, you might have noticed we have some uh, delightful flyers all around the church letting you know that there will be a big sale. So thank you to our Sunday school students and families for providing items for that big sale. I would imagine it will be a free will donation. Yes, it will be a free will donation. So uh, if you'd like to contribute to the big sale by bringing in your own religious items, please feel free to do so. The more, the merrier. And if you're a high school senior, we are looking for senior photos. Uh, so either you, your family, or if you happen to know a senior, please have them send those to Jeff at the email address there. You can also drop them off at the church. We'd be happy to scan them for you and then uh, get them back to you. Are there any other announcements for this morning? If not, I'd like to stand as you're able for the confession and forgiveness. who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize 
against you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us in the end of your love. And help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under the wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. Amen. Our gathering hymn is number 807, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
us all in our sin. By your baptism, clothe us with the garments of your grace, and feed us at the table of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated, and at this time, we enjoy the special music from our MC choir. <coughs>
Good morning. Good morning. The first lesson today is from Joshua chapter 5, verses 9 to 12. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt, and so that place is called Gilgal to this day. When the Israelites were camped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover in the evening of the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho. On the day after Passover, and on that every day, they ate the produce of the land, on leavened cakes and parched grain. <coughs> the manna ceased on that day, they ate the produce of the land, and the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. The psalm today is Psalm 32, and we will read it responsibly. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven, and whose sin is put away. Happy are they whom the Lord gives so guilt, and in whose spirit there is no God. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away, because of my groaning all day long. For your hand was set upon me day and night, and I was sure what I felt as a beautiful summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore all the people will make their prayers to you when I am in trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you shall go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse or mule, which have no understanding, who must be fitted with bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great are the tribulations of the way, but the mercy and grace of those who trust in the Lord. Be glad. You righteous and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all who are true of heart. The second lesson today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from the human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from the human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All of this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on the behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Here in Celeste. Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country. 
and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has got him back, safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. And the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And at this time, I'd like to invite your children forward for a message. Come on up. It's a room. Hello, everyone. How is everyone doing today? Good. It's so good to see all of you. Thank you for being here in worship today. It's wonderful to have all of you here. All right. Have you ever heard the story of Aladdin before? Aladdin, is that familiar? It's a really, really old story. Maybe you watched a movie about it? Yeah. There's a movie from when I was a kid, and there's a movie not too long ago that was made. Well, it's a really, really old story. And the stories are all kind of a little bit different. But the basic gist is that there's a young man, his name is Aladdin, and somehow, some way, he ends up with this lamp. Now, it's not any old lamp. It's not a lamp that you just turn the little switch on and the light bulb turns on. No, it's an oil lamp, and it's made of metal. And it has a handle on it. And the way it works is that you put oil in it, and then on the tip that kind of looks like a spout, that's where the flame would come out, so you can carry it around and you can see where you were in each room. All right, so these were very popular back in the time of lamp. Well, this lamp had magic powers, right? When you rub it, like if you're cleaning it, get fingerprints on it, you have to clean it. Well, if you rub the lamp, a genie would come out of it. You know what a genie is? It's kind of a magical ghost. I don't know, he lives inside the lamp and he comes out. And he gives you any wish that you ask for. Whoa, wouldn't that be fun? Three wishes? Yeah, that's what the movie tells you. <laughs> so you can get three wishes from the genie. Anything you want. If you wanted a whole bunch of money, the genie could give you a whole bunch of money. If you wanted a brand new car, the genie could give you a brand new car. If you wanted to live forever, the genie could make you live forever. I mean, literally anything you can ask for. Wouldn't that be kind of nice? You know, lamp and rub and the genie came out, and you get three wishes. Well, in our 
story from the Bible this morning. We hear about a young man. His name is not Aladdin, and he doesn't have a magic lamp, but he has three wishes. So instead of asking the genie, he goes to his dad, and he says, Dad, I want three things. I want, number one, a whole bunch of money. Number two, I want to travel far and wide and do whatever I want to do. And number three, I want to be my own boss for the rest of my life and never listen to anyone ever again. So those were the three things he wanted. And what do you think your dad would say if you asked him that? No. <laughs> yeah, was, you know, he would say no. But guess what? His dad said, okay, you can have those things. And he, he gave him a whole bunch of money. And then the son went off and he did whatever he wanted to do. But then he ran out of money. Uh-oh. He ran out of money. And no one would help him. So who do you think you would, you would go back to when no one helps you when you're empty run out of money? Your dad and your mom. Yeah. That's what he did, and he felt terrible. He felt so sorry because he he's lost everything that his dad gave him. You might think that your dad would be kind of upset, right? Yeah, I don't think so. His dad was so happy that he was back. He opened up his arms to give him a huge hug. He put on the very best clothes he had in the house for him, and he threw a big party because he thought he'd never see him ever again. But he did. And that made this dad really, really, really happy. So that's what we can think about when it comes to, <laughs> what are we doing over here? <laughs> So that's what we can think about when it comes to God, our Father. God loves us so much, and even when we make mistakes or we forget about our relationship with Him, God is always there to welcome us back. And God throws a party every time that we come back to Him. That's cool, isn't it? Yeah. All right, we're going to wrap things up here before May preaches for <laughs> See what she does with the best. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much that you are our Father who loves us. We pray that you will always welcome us again and again, even when we make mistakes. And help us to forgive others when they make mistakes in our lives. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so very much for coming up. You head back to your seats. See you next time. <laughs>
to keep track of things, to count, to make sure that everything is adding up, to quantify, to measure, and to compare. And all this counting is not for its own sake, but it's moving toward a larger goal, moving toward forgiveness or fairness. We track things not because we need to, but to keep things fair, to make sure things are running right and out of concern for justice. But as important as counting is, sometimes it just doesn't work, especially in relationships. Imagine counting every good thing someone did for you and using that to judge how much they love you. Or imagine keeping track of every unhelpful or unhurtful thing that people do to you in your life and then demanding payment for those things. Worse yet, imagine them demanding payment from your mistakes. It just doesn't work. And so the landowner in Jesus' parable does something that landowners never do. He runs out to meet his wayward son the minute he sees him coming from the distance. He doesn't send a servant. He doesn't wait for his son to come all the way to him. He rushes down the road like no respectable landowner ever would, making a complete fool of himself. Why in the world, after all, would he be so eager to see a son who claimed his inheritance early? Which was basically the equivalent of the son telling his father, I'd be better off if you were dead. But then he wasted it all. Not only that, he doesn't even give his son a chance to explain or repent but interrupts his well-practiced speech and instead embraces him and restores him in relationship immediately. It's safe to say that all the other landowners will be talking about his ridiculous and demeaning behavior, the first century equivalent of a social organization or maybe the lines of love. But this landowner doesn't care because he's a parent before he's a landowner. And so he doesn't count all the wrongs his son has done to him. He only tries to count his lucky stars when his son does finally come back. And if that's not enough, he then does something a landowner would never do yet a second time when he goes out to speak to his older son. He doesn't call his son inside. He doesn't relate message by a servant. He goes out to plead with his son to come into the party. And what should have been a pretty simple do what I say moment between a father and a son turns into an embarrassing occasion where the landowner must beg his son for obedience. And all those who see him behave as no self-respecting landowner We'll be talking about this certainly as well. But he just doesn't seem to care. Because before he's a respectable landowner, again, he's a parent who loves both his children more than anyone can measure. That's when counting breaks down. When you love so much, there is no scale adequate to calculate your devotion. The older son. Counts. And you can hear his ill fated calculations in everything he says all these years. You never, this son of yours, but the landowner, the father doesn't. He can't. Love like this cannot be measured, or tracked, or managed. Which is why I think the cross is not simply a means of payment for the sins of humankind. But rather, it shows us just how far our prodigal God will go to tell us of God's immeasurable love for each of us. What we don't hear in this morning's passage are the two parables told right before this story of the prodigal son. The first is the story of the shepherd and the flock of 100 sheep one of which has gone missing, so he leaves the 99 behind to find the one that is lost. And in the story, a 1% loss, what is 1%? It's 
It's enough for the shepherd to risk everything to restore the wholeness of his flock. The second story is of the woman with ten coins, again, one of which has gone missing. So here we have a 10% loss. It's enough for the woman to spend the entire day searching for the missing coin, again, to restore wholeness. In today's parable, the landowner has lost one of his two sons to half of his wealth, 50% lost. It was enough for the father to celebrate when his son returns and his family is complete once again. So you see, the, the stakes keep getting higher and higher in each of these parables. And the completion of the series, I believe, is the story of Jesus himself. Knowing what's about to become of him, the death of God's only son, a 100% loss. It's enough for God to redeem humankind and promise life everlasting to all in the name of his crucified and risen Son, Christ our Lord. The sense of loss, relief, and redemption couldn't possibly be any higher. And we are the prodigal sons and daughters who are celebrated and welcomed home to God's family again and again and again through the cross of Christ. What we hear in today's gospel is that God loves you, each of you, fiercely and courageously, vulnerably, unendingly. Whether you have wasted opportunity after opportunity, or have been quietly working away faithfully and wondering when you will finally get noticed, God loves you. Whether you have welcomed others who are down and out, or have judged others for not measuring up. God loves you. Whether you think this news is the best in the world or you barely even notice it, God loves you. Whether you're in worship today reluctantly or with joy. Whether you have a lifelong relationship with God or have just come to know God or aren't even sure that God even really exists. God loves you, truly and madly and deeply. You are loved, and you matter to God. And may God strengthen us to share that same love with others. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Please stand here as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostle. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. One prayer request this morning, uh, a name that will be included in our prayers, is Mark Hood. Uh, he was recently diagnosed with a brain tumor. A young man graduated from Union High School in 2020 and uh, is currently serving in the Air Force. So please keep Mark and uh, his entire family in your prayers during this time of, of, um, of healing. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Jesus formed the disciples in the ways of extravagant mercy and profound welcome. Lead your church to be a community marked by forgiveness, hospitality, and celebration. Send us to transform a world plagued by fear and condemnation. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. You make the land to produce a harvest that sustains your entire creation. Equip farmers and farm workers who till the soil. Nourish the earth with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine. Heal grounds tainted by pollution or misuse. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Countries are divided, and leaders often harbor grudges. Reconcile nations that experience conflict, especially Ukraine. Act quickly to bring an end to all war. Anoint peacemakers trained in the art of diplomacy and foster a spirit of collaboration among political rivals. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your people cry for help in times of distress. Resolve disagreements among family members. Save those experiencing financial hardship. Hear our prayers for those who are grieving and those who are sick, especially Mark. Console us with the promise that everything can become new. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your love comes to us when a table is set and a feast is prepared. Bless the feeding ministries of this community. Bring an end to hunger in our community and around the world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. The one who was dead is alive again. We give thanks for those who have died confident that steadfast love surrounds them. Shelter them in your love until we are gathered at your heavenly banquet. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of God's peace with one another.
You may be seated as we receive this morning's offering. What wondrous love is this?
You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace. Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God.